Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to go over GIMP software, which is completely free, and how to get free artwork off the internet. So you're gonna to go to your Google search bar and click GIMP download. So it'll come up and you wanna look for GIMP.org. This way you're not uh, downloading any viruses or malware to your computer. So this is what the page should look like. You can either download it directly, uh, BitTorrent or from the Microsoft Store, I'm just going to download mine directly and you just do that by clicking on it. Now to get free artwork. This I found is, is uh, pretty easy to use just by looking up free coloring pages because you're already going to have that in black and white. We're just going to click on view all and we're going to scroll down for some artwork that we can use for this. Oh, that elephant's pretty cute. I'm going to go down here and I found some really cute Canada because I'm from Canada so we're going to use that today. Now I can use this artwork right here and that's just by going to your keyboard you click on the print screen. So this will be the first sample that I'm going to show you and I've already clicked the exe file button and I've installed GIMP on my computer so we're just opening that up right now. And it's already showing me an update is available. I'm not gonna do that right now. So we're gonna go file the image size and you have lots of choices for what you wanna do. I'm gonna go in inches and just make it page size, which is 11 inches by eight and a half inches. And I just click okay. So there's my page size. Then I will go over the edit and I will paste. So basically your print screen button on your keyboard is a copy function and you've just pasted what you've seen on your computer screen. So right now um, the artwork is movable so I will go over to image and I will flatten that image so it's not that movable. And then I will go into my selection tool there, make a box and I go a little bit bigger when I'm first cropping it and I'll click on crop to selection. With the magnifying tool there I can zoom in or zoom out just by clicking which one I want and clicking on the page. So as you can see, I've got uh, some gray circles there that I wanna get rid of and there's some black writing on the bottom. So I'm going to paint those off. But uh, I'm just gonna crop now just a little bit closer just to have that done. Okay, so I am going to select the paint tool. I have it set to normal. I'm just gonna select my color. Now I do have white, I can click on that, or I can use this color bar up in here, and just by clicking and sliding to the top left, that would be for white. It shows it in the current, and I'll click OK. So now I just press my mouse and go over these circles. And of course your nib selection is to the right-hand side there so you can change how you want to paint. I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller so I'm not erasing what I don't want or painting over what I don't wanna paint. Now with the gray circles, I could have probably gotten rid of them with the contrast slider button, but I will show you how that works in just a second. I'm just going to get rid of this bottom black writing by painting over it. <clears throat> and I'm just going to zoom in a bit. And as you can see, there's little speckles I've left behind. You definitely try to get everything that you can. I'm just going to fast forward that. You guys don't need to be bored by watching me paint. So you can use your slider tools to the right hand side and the bottom of the page to move your page around get it into the position you need. Now I'm going to go image grayscale. Now the precision, I'm going to change that to 16 bit integer, in, integers, but I can do that in my exporting window as well. I'm just going to go to the brightness and contrast. So by upping the contrast there, um, if you keep an eye on the bottom left where I had left a little bit of stuff that I didn't get when I was painting, by sliding that contrast up, you get rid of anything that you've left behind and I probably could have used that for those gray circles as well. So I'm just going to enhance it as well by sharpening it. And that's under the filters. 
And I'm just going to put it on split view so you can see the difference because right now it looks a little bit mappy. So by changing your radius amount and your threshold, um, you can either sharpen it, smooth it. A good trick is to keep an eye on the lines, keep an eye on any circles. And I'm just going to fast forward through this section because it's just me fiddling. And you don't really need to watch that. And I'm just going to fast forward along here. And I'm changing my threshold, turning my split view off. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click OK. I'm finished sharpening it. So I'm going to zoom out. So now I'm just going to do one final crop. And this is a good tip, especially if you're using laser gerbil. Um, sometimes there's some stuff in the corners that gets left behind because it doesn't completely crop it properly. Um, so I'm going to also make sure I drag that box to as close to the graphic as I can get. So I click on File Export and I pick the folder where I want it to go, which I'm going to put in my pictures. And I'm exporting it as a PNG, which is a portable network graphic. I'm going to name it Canada. And then just click on export for the next dialog box. I normally do click on the interlacing. I save the background color, save the gamma, save the resolution. I just click on export. So that was our first one that we did. And we took it from this little piece here. But if I click on this, now sometimes when you click on these and go into the coloring pages, you either have to subscribe to them. Um, if you're afraid of the downloads, might uh, contain malware, viruses, trackers, cookies. You save all that trouble just by using your print screen function. Now, if you were to come across a graphic that is too big for your screen, just by right clicking on your mouse, you'll see the open image in new tab. And if you click on that, now you've got its screen size, which again, you can go to your keyboard hit that print screen function and you've got that that you were able to paste into GIMP. But this is a much cleaner copy so I'm actually going to use the print screen function for that which I've already done and I am just going to make my page size again in GIMP. I'm going to paste the cleaner image in there. Zoom in on it. And again, I'm going to try and crop it before I flatten the image, which it won't let me do. So I have to go to image, flatten the image just to keep it locked on the page. I'm going to crop that as tight as I possibly can. And I'm just going to fast forward through this, hopefully a little bit faster for you so you don't have to watch everything that I, I'm doing again but yeah that is a nicer cleaner crisper copy so I'm just again going to paint over that black writing get rid of that now I've got my brush set to normal there are other settings that you can use other filters um, you can I have mine set to normal but you can erase to transparent especially if you're going to cut and paste certain items on top of each other you can uh, paint it translucent um, but I will be showing that in another video. And now I want to just show you how to size up your graphic. I am going to uh, just quick sharpen this as well. And I like that, so I'm going to click on OK. So instead of uh, changing the mode to grayscale or it to a 16-bit, I can do that with the export filter. just going to go down and scale the image okay so by clicking over here in inches you have different measurements that you can use a lot of people are familiar with millimeters I'm more familiar with inches I'm old school now I do have my lock button on um, if your lock button is turned off it will not keep an accurate scale and you may distort your image so make sure you're keeping your lock on for the interpolation I'm not exactly sure what that means to be honest so I'm just going to keep it at cubic because I haven't had any problems and I'm going to click scale so this is the size that I want and I'm going to export 
and I'm going to just replace the original file that I had made that just wasn't as clean and crisp as this one is. So I'm just going to replace that file. Again, I usually click on interlacing, the save background color, save gamma, save the resolution. I can switch that 16-bit gray, and I'm going to export it. So I already have Laser Gerbil open, and I've just clicked on the file open. I'm going to go to my folder where I saved that project. There it is. I'm going to click on it, say open. And uh, important with your sliders here, if you move your sliders from doing photographs and that, make sure you have that at the 50% marks. So of course for the brightness that's 80, the contrast is 80, and the white clip will be 50. I have it set on smooth, line to line tracing, diagonal is my favorite way to burn. And I just click on next, and these are some of my favorite settings. The 1500 at 850%, I am going to click at the auto size because I've already sized that image and it's going to make it the size that I want. So I'll click on next and there we go. It's come up in laser gerbil and I am all ready to burn. So I hope you found this video helpful, inspiring, and you're ready to go create. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. Have a great day, everybody.